Well, first off, how did you come to become involved with hospice, and what do you what do you do directly as a volunteer? Well, I tried to get into hospice uh, in my early twenties. First mm -hmm. of all, in Van when I lived in Vancouver, but they took one look at me and realized I probably wasn't ready for it yeah. yet. So. Um, it wasn't until, as you say, about a dozen years ago, uh, my partner Therese Bouchard was uh, getting involved with it, and I thought, yeah, I always wanted to do that. So um, I took the training, and uh, which is absolutely fantastic, mm -hmm. and I recommend that for anybody, no matter what they're doing in life, just as a way of learning more about themselves and about how to be with other people. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, started volunteering it was a little bit sporadic um, you know client here client there but um, as time has gone on I've uh, gotten steadier and steadier as far as more and more clients regular yeah. and um, yeah I just love it you know um, whether it's working with someone sitting with someone who's at the end of their life or working through grief, grief mm -hmm. issues with people it's um, it's very educative and uh, helps me immensely in my own life. So you mentioned clients sort of uh, as individual cases, sort of the way you refer to it. Uh, what would a typical day or a typical period with a client entail? Uh, you, you mentioned there's kind of two kinds. That, that yeah, well, th th that's the thing. They aren't typical. <laughs> they, may be, they may be similar in yeah. situation, say, uh, for instance, I in that it's the end of their life, but every person is different, and this is one of the fantastic things that um, I learned from this is everyone is um, approaching for instance if it's end of life mm -hmm. their situation completely differently so uh, I'm dealing with an individual uh, with their life history with who they are at the moment and then as I say with how they're approaching their end of life and so our interaction is different and my experience of it is different as well. Mm. Uh, but generally, you go. You might be helping. You might be bedside, just uh, providing okay. comfort, or or yeah. Primarily, it's it's uh, sitting with the person, um, giving them uh, some kind of uh, neutral companionship. In mm -hmm. that um, we don't have any uh, history together. Um, there's no uh, emotional. Uh, baggage, baggage family dynamics. Uh, so, for uh, for the the client, it's often um, a kind of a refreshing position to be in because um, I have no judgment. I have mm -hmm. no um, bias. Or yeah, nothing. Not, nothing that the other person is going to have to watch out for or yeah. tread lightly or anything. They can be completely themselves. Yeah, the concerns um, that they can raise, they don't have to worry about getting you emotionally That's uh, right. Into it. That's right. And so primarily I'm sitting with the person, I'm listening. Mm -hmm. Those are the two main functions of a hospice volunteer, just to be with the person and to listen to them. So in the time that you've been doing it, you say you tried to get involved in your early 20s and uh, now gotten involved a little more recently. Have you... Uh, how how have you felt felt that reward that you thought you would get when you were involved in it earlier? Has it uh, become a big part? Well, no. The um, <laughs> I, I was I was deluded in my twenties. Yeah. I, I thought I was bringing something to the table uh, in my twenties. Now I realize that what I'm bringing to the table is space, mm -hmm. and um, so what I'm getting out of it is the the filling of the, of that space if you will i'm not there's no ego gratification or yeah. anything from my point of view it's all uh i'm learning and growing from it and so uh you said the training that you had taken was really valuable it sounds like valuable in your private life uh, in addition to your time i wish that was something that they taught in the schools yeah because really it's about how to be with another person non-judgmentally yeah and uh learn to have a healthy dynamic uh, of exchange rather than the kind of ego fraught dynamics that we have in society in general. So uh, more more funding for hospice could help get that 
uh, training a little more widespread to more individuals, get more people involved. And well, that would be great if 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 we could open the training to um, open it wider to the general public, and then from that perhaps glean volunteers, people who mm -hmm. who found it interesting that they would like to go on with that. Right now, it's strictly for people who want to volunteer. Yeah. Um, yeah, perhaps uh, if we could open it more to the public, that would be beneficial to everyone. Sweet. Well, thanks for taking the time to uh, chat a little bit about hospice here. My pleasure. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Thank, Thank you. you.